I scored these thin oak panels from a local flooring company. They were offcuts that they were trying to get rid of. Each panel is about 5 sixteenths of an inch thick. Today we're going to take these panels and turn them into a jewelry display box for one of my clients. This is one of the first projects that I'll be making for a client and I'm excited that they're allowing me to record this process for you. I began by examining all of the boards. Some pieces would become the faces of the case, while others would become the sides. After a quick review of the plans, I could hook up my jigsaw and start cutting all the planks to dimension. The way I did this is by clamping the boards to my workbench and cutting along a line that is square to an edge. I made sure to cut to the right of my line. This means that I'm cutting on the waist side instead of cutting on the keep side. It's easier to remove wood than add it back on. One thing I didn't like about this setup was how much it vibrated. Ideally, the line I'm cutting on would be much more supported and closer to the workbench. Unfortunately, I had to work around my clamping situation. Then, I had to do that all a second time to make another face for the jewelry case. And there we go, nice and square. It is now time to make the sides for the case. I'm using a marking gauge to scribe lines that are one inch apart. This will make the case be just over two inches wide in the end. I am now setting up my 45 degree router jig. I clamp the piece of wood to the jig and run my router along the edge with a 45 degree edging bit. Great camera angle there, Eli. To prevent tear out, I made this little indent into the side of the wood. This makes the end of the cut more supported and less likely to chip out. I can then clamp that same piece of wood to my bench once more to be able to cut out the sides for the box. Shout out to all my patron supporters. Patrons get special rewards that my subscribers don't. I left the link in the description to where you can check all those rewards out. To clean up the cut, I used a block plane once more. This gave the side of the box a flat edge. I just do all of that four more times and I have all of the pieces ready for the glue up. To have a successful glue up, I'm using a band clamp. The band clamp lets me have even pressure all the way around each joint. I slid each of the pieces into the band clamp. I used a liberal amount of glue to be sure that the joint was strong. This type of glue joint is end grain to end grain. That means that the pores of the wood will be soaking up all of that wood glue and not stay together very well. We turn the handle to draw in the band. We turn the handle to start to draw the band into the mechanism, and this really clamps down on the joints.
Once the glue dries, we need to reinforce the joint. Like I said, it's a very weak joint. Do this by first cutting into the joint like this. This does make it weaker for a short amount of time, but we do one more step to ensure that it's a very strong joint. That step is taking some very thick shavings of a contrasting wood. And then spreading glue on that big chip and sliding it into the slot. It adds strength and rigidity to the end grain to end grain joint. Once it's dry, we can just trim off the excess with a chisel. Now I can do some fine tuning of the sides. Not all the side pieces were the same height. I'm using again my block plane to be sure that it's flat and level. Now it's time to attach the back of the case. I use some more wood glue first, spreading it all the way around the edge of the frame. and then made sure it was held in nice and strong with brad nails. I'm sure that this thing will last forever. With all the glue dry, I could start sanding. Hey Eli, why aren't you using your palm sander? I sanded for a long time. That seems to be a reoccurring theme in these videos. Now, if only I had another one exactly like this one. Hmm. There we go. That's movie magic for you. We are super close to being done now. All that we have left is to put on the hardware. I started with these decorative hinges. I made sure to pre-drill all the holes for the screws. Then I cut a bunch of this gap filler foam. It will act as the mechanism to hold the necklaces in place. I inserted them using hot glue. And now you can see right here, this is how it's gonna be holding the necklaces. You just push the cord into the gaps and it holds it there nice and sturdy. I'm going to be installing this little uh, latch. The latch will keep the case closed while on the go.
It works wonderfully. Good job, Eli. Now for a new material, leather. This is my first time ever working with leather and it was super fun. I'm using a marking gauge to mark out one inch strips. That strip could then be cut out and then attached using some, and then attached to the case using some pins and contact cement. And just like that, we have a handle. Look at that color change. You can even see some flecking coming through. This project took me quite a long time, but came out absolutely amazing. I've already got confirmation from my client, and they say that they love it. I really hope to start doing more custom work like this and be able to share more of these unique projects with you. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you really love what I'm doing here, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.